Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, and digital marketing courses online and at our 15 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events, we host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. Today, we have an awesome guest presenting. I'd like to introduce you to Dave Mathias. Dave is the founder of Beyond the Data, where he helps customers be user focused and data fluent. Over the years, he has worked in various product roles in small to large companies with a consistent focus on data and analytic products. He believes that customer problems are solved through a mixture of people, process, data, and technology, and is a strong believer that advising clients mean you teach them how to finish, how to fish, and how to solve real high value problems. Feel free to leave any questions for Dave in the comments, and I'll be sure to ask him them at the end. And without further ado, let's welcome Dave. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. And I am going to uh, share my screen. And perfect. Okay, excellent. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, great to be here today, and always enjoy uh, talking about product and talking about data. So we're going to be mixing those two today with using data visualization from product people or for product people. And uh, so there might be a little noise in the background, just to let you know. Uh, but uh, we'll try to keep that down as much as possible. So. Uh, what's the agenda today? Well, we're going to talk about data visualization, how it plays a role in product and how, and what are the ABCs of effective data visualization, where to start, and how to continue learning. Uh, but before we start, uh, successful data viz is more than just charts and graphs, because that's what people oftentimes think about. But really, data viz is just one component of a number of things. Of course, user experience is vital nowadays, and more and more uh, emphasis is put there. But things like gamification and behavioral science and more come into play when you're actually thinking about data visualization and how it's going to benefit, uh, whether it's your end users in your product or whether it's uh, even how you're relaying information uh, to sales or to other areas. So where does data visualization play a role in product and how? Well, there's a number of places, and these are just a few that we're gonna talk about, is communicating with executives, of course. Uh, that's oftentimes, you know, using charts and graphs, it's great to uh, help uh, executives understand uh, material you're trying to put out. Uh, enabling sales is, of course, another component. Um, understanding marketing is critical. Uh, understanding your customers, of course, because that's one of the core things as a product manager. And of course, even integrating within your product itself. And here's an example of Fitbit and some of the stuff they've done with data visualization. Uh, so two types of data visualization though, because people oftentimes think of one, but not the other. So exploratory is the one that people often don't think about. So you have data and you want to understand what that data looks like. Well, use exploratory data visualization to help yourself understand what that data looks like. And then of course, there's the storytelling aspect that we're all so used to when we talk about data visualization. So let's go through some of the ABCs for effective data visualization. And this is not an exhaustive list, but I think these are the key things that if you nail these things right, you're gonna be well off. So first thing, it's gotta start here. There's a reason why it's at the front is, what's the value to the user? So asking yourself all the time, what is that value to the end user, whether you're including it in a report, uh, data viz, or whether you're going to uh, be putting in your product. All too often, things are just put there because you need to check the box and, and you know, think about how data visualization is used uh, what's that value? Um, of course, understand your audience. So empathize with your audience. Ask the questions, who, what, when, where, and how. So those questions, who is your audience? What do they want to understand using data visualization? Uh, when are they going to access your data viz? When are they going to, uh, actually, I repeated that one. Uh, to, or where are they going to access your data viz? I did not repeat that. Uh, and how are they going to use your data viz? So asking yourself those things and really understanding those users. And reality is, is you may have one different user type, right, that's accessing that information, whether it's an infographic or whether it's in your product. Um, but one thing to really keep in mind all the time is keep it simple. Uh, bar charts, line charts, scatter plots, you know, they sometimes seem boring, but done well, that's really the way people are going to understand how to interpret your visualization. 
and they're going to get the most bang for your buck because that's what you're there for. You're trying to relay information to help them, you know, change behavior or understand some action or, or something. But if you try to make a fancy data viz that people have a hard time understanding, it doesn't matter. So things like, uh, like say, uh, a line chart, when, especially when you have uh, continuous data like this, uh, like dates, uh, you'd want to use. On the other hand, scatter plots are great, uh, you know, can relay a lot of information, but the bar charts and others that are standard. Uh, things to avoid, though, uh, those those uh, word charts, I mean, they're, they're, they're nice, they show a little, they're fancy and, and all that, and certain certain areas, yes, you can use those. Uh, certainly stay away from 3D, stay away from complicated pie charts, things like that. And there's a whole bunch of other things that are bad charts. So just keep it simple. Uh, another thing that often comes into play is color and really thinking about how you're using color for a number of reasons. One is, you know, graded color is great when it's continuous, but remember humans are not able to absorb an unlimited amount of gradations and really process the data. So think of that five, eight, five to 10 uh, scale of how many gradations you're gonna make and go accordingly. On the other hand, you may have data that's more categorical data. Uh, for example, like states or, or uh, you know, models of cars. And that categorical data, you're gonna wanna use varied colors uh, when you have that. The other thing, of course, to always be aware of though is uh, bad use of color. Um, be aware, you know, accessibility is so important nowadays. So what kind of colors do people typically have colorblind? Uh, you know, certainly uh, the red, green, the yellow, blues are two of the most popular with the uh, colorblind. Uh, but in other way to, uh, uh, you know, account for that, even if you want to use red, green, is you can use shape, size, textures, and other ways to help differentiate between the colors in a, in a different way. So you have the two colors, but you can be using uh, a lines that go across the green to help differentiate for the person that's colorblind, for example. Uh, so any good product manager, you should be empathetic. So that's no different than in data viz if you're a product manager. So use a little text to provide context. This is one of the things I think I see most underused is when you have a graphic, whether it's in your product or whether it's infographic or whether it's sent in an email, provide that text to go with it. What's that takeaway that you want out of that chart or graph? Uh, and also make sure to label, 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 label things, your titles, your accesses, et cetera. And think about text size and font because not everyone has the same eyes as you. Uh, really understanding this goes back to the empathizing with your, your audience and really knowing who your audience is. If people are gonna have a harder time, make the, type, the, the font a little bit larger. Um, Data viz uh, experience. So just like user experience, there's data viz experience that you're gonna have. So what's that experience like that that user is gonna play? And there's some different ways that this could happen and we'll, we'll be touching on. Um, just as a reminder, don't do too much. So just trying to throw that out there. Once again, this goes along with being simple. But so you talked about different audiences. One of the things you'll notice and like Fitbit is a great example, I think of, of uh, company that does a great job in their application with data viz, uh, especially even hitting on this novice nerd concept. Uh, so sometimes you're going to have people that are very novice to your data or novice to data visualization, and you'll keep it very simplified for those users. On the other hand, you're also going to have the more complex, they may be somebody that's, you know, regularly using data, or they're really wanting to nerd out on that data that they're, uh, they're getting out of their Fitbit or out of whatever product or whatever you know, dashboard you're showing them. Uh, and now those super nerds, sometimes you're gonna have to play to both of those and understanding how to integrate into data viz, how you can play to both of those is something that takes, uh, takes a little time to do, but when done well, it's very beneficial. The other thing to think about is exploring versus informing. So when I say explore, you think of the New York Times and some of the stuff they do with their uh, data viz. If, you look, if you've ever, if you haven't looked at that, you should look at that. They do some great stories, um, really complicated data viz. It's really an exploration that you're gonna go through. On the other hand, sometimes, especially like when you're gonna communicate something to your executives, you just wanna have a quick amount of information. You have your KPIs, you might have a simple uh, bar chart. You have some really simple things that you're gonna let them take a few seconds, process the information, and then be able to act. Uh, so really understanding who that audience is once again. Are you wanting that audience to explore? Are you wanting to inform? Are you wanting both? And then how do you make sure that the right user gets to the right channel is important. Uh, the other thing is 
what database is a great way to experiment more than a lot of things. You can really do a lot of great experimentation in database and see how it works. So it's one of those things put out there, especially if you're talking about putting in a product. Uh, but even if you're like using it into like say communications to your sales team, uh, test things out, see how it goes, you know, typical A-B testing and, and see what works best. Uh, but one thing that often happens is people put these data viz or they put a dashboard or they put something out there and it just stays out there. And they don't know if it's being used. They don't know what, what's well, well liked, what's not liked. They just sort of throw it out in the world. So you really got to think about getting input, tracking usage, and then iterating off that. Because if you're not doing those three things, then you really are wasting your time and your user's time most likely. So when you're talking about this, where's a good way to start? Now, it sort of depends on what you're looking to do. Uh, certainly you might be just starting out and you're gonna, you know, you're a new product manager and you're just getting into data visualization. Well, maybe you wanna start using it in a communication or report that you normally provide. So maybe it's a, a report with a lot of words and a lot of tables and now you're gonna, you know, try to incorporate some data visualization. That's a good place for you to start practicing the things. Uh, design some database that would help you better communicate uh, with that audience. So really understanding if it's sales, you know what they're after, how do you, uh, you know, adapt some of those uh, concepts, uh, data visualization that you take your existing communication or report. And then make sure to, like I say, get that input from those folks, you know, test it out, see what they say, and then integrate that data visualization communication or report in this case. Uh, but of course, you can be doing the same thing when we're talking about incorporating in a product. And then of course, like I say, the last stage is always test, iterate and repeat, just like anything else you wanna, you know, it's never gonna be perfect, but you always wanna be looking at trying to make it better. Uh, so those are the, just a ways to start with a communication or report. But like I say, you can take those same steps and you can integrate those steps into a putting it in your new, uh, putting a dashboard, for example, in your app. Um, but once again, you're gonna have to think about, you know, if you have an app that's desktop version and mobile version, you know, how does that relay that information to those mobile users versus those desktop users? And they're really assessing, you know, does this, you know, help benefit the user? Is there that value like we talked about at the beginning or whether it's something that uh, users really don't do without and there are, can maybe if there's a few minutes, we might go through some couple examples of things that are out there. Um, so knowing that we're short on time, I do want to make sure to put some things to continue learning. And then maybe we'll go into a couple of those examples before we take questions. Um, so some online learning that's out there, uh, you know, there's tons of great YouTube videos. There's this thing called Makeover Monday. It's uh, done, uh, you'll oftentimes see it in a Tableau format. There's what's called Tableau Public. And Tableau is just a data visualization tool. It's just one of many tools that are out there, but there's this thing that called Monday Makeover. It's done out of the UK. They basically publish data. It comes out on Sunday. The whole idea is to uh, put together a data visualization based off that data uh, roughly in an hour and publish it out there. And so it's one of those, it's been going on for years and it's a great way to practice your skills. Um, and also you have access to different types of data so you can get better at uh, both doing it yourself, but also seeing what other people did with that same data. Um, another th site that's great is Information's Beautiful, but like I say, New York Times, a bunch of other things online. Um, also in person, uh, you know, there's tons of things, like there's a ton of data viz meetups out there uh, that are, you know, specific in cities. I know in the Twin Cities, we have both in Chicago and San Francisco and Seattle and all these cities have these data viz meetups that are there. But if you're in a city that doesn't have one, well then create one. Get people together that are interested in data viz and, uh, you know, you'll learn better and you'll also be helping the community. Uh, so some great books that are out there. The Big Book of Dashboards is a great dashboard book. Uh, Storytelling with Data from Colin Nossbaum is a great uh, book out there. On, uh, uh, th and then of course, uh, there's one that's uh, more recent called Data Visualization Made Simple. I interviewed that author, she's out of New York. And uh, it's, it's really, I think, a pretty exhaustive book on data visualization. I was really impressed with it myself. So another good book uh, to take a look at. Uh, there's a number of podcasts out there, but I'm gonna list two. Storytelling with Data. Uh, so that's Cole Nassabam who uh, did the book up uh, above, but she also has a podcast called Storytelling with Data also. Uh, great one. And then I'm gonna put a plug out there, shameless plug for the podcast that my uh, business partner and I uh, do called Data Able, because we focus on everything that's the non-technical side of data. 
uh, so data is included. And so uh, that little shameless plug. But let's take a few minutes and dive into a couple examples. So before going into the thank you and all that, have a few examples here. So this is Fitbit. So Fitbit has, uh, like say, a great app that's out there. They have a lot of, and this is just one example of data viz. This is sort of their dashboard on mobile. And they do a great job of using color. They great do a great job of, of varying up text. So you can see here, okay, most important thing for me is how many steps I'm walking. So I have that as a, a primary thing. It's biggest, it's easy to tell. Uh, it's green because I hit the goal for the day. Uh, same with these other things. Uh, then there's other things when I scroll down here, uh, there's a here is I'm asleep for a night. Yeah, bad night of sleep. Uh, what's your current heart rate? And then of course, when you click on each of these things, this is where I say, you know, you're going from novice to expert. You click on these things, you're gonna get more depth. And that's really, you know, this is a great novice because I can quickly identify information that's out there. Uh, but then I can dive in deeper and really understand, okay, on my sleep, for example, okay, I, I slept this long. What are the different levels of REM sleep that I have? What was the average throughout the week? What's my last week versus this week look like? Things like that. Um, so you can really get into nerd out if you're looking to nerd out with that data. Um, so like say, here's some good on this easy to copy, add simple color icons, et cetera. Um, some, oh, an opportunity here, I think for them to make it better is the top card when you switch uh, from the, you see those arrows at the top, that's switching days. Uh, but when you switch days above, it doesn't switch days below with like sleep and heart rate and all those things. So I think that's an opportunity that they could do to better uh, create a better user experience. Um, here's an example of one that I don't think is so great. And uh, sorry, Audible, but I'm a big fan of Audible. But at the same time, I think they do a really bad job with their data visualization from what I've seen on the Android app. And so this is uh, a few months ago, I took this uh, picture. It's one of the several data visualizations that are there. It's an example of really a dog, like why do I care about like how many books that I have right now in my library, 177 books, okay? And it's pretty much a straight line. And I imagine most people on Audible have that similar straight line. So is it gonna really change my behavior? Does it give me information that I really need to know? Do I really need that table to understand that? Um, no, nah, I don't think anyone. So, and yeah, it's clean and easy to understand, but really, doesn't provide much value like we're talking about that first thing doesn't encourage me to really buy more books i don't see anything i don't see anything that says hey you're buying less than the average user you're consuming less it doesn't talk about like oh okay and there's there is a listening time one to the left uh you'll see but the listening time is simple numbers there isn't really any uh, straight visualization other than just reporting out your numbers um so does this make me feel better about myself does this help my mold my behavior at all once again, all those questions I think are no, at least for me. Um, you may feel different, but uh, because of that, I, I just think they could do a better job with their uh, data viz. <laughs> so I'm gonna show one more example because I think it's a good example of another thing outside of a typical product. And so this is a company in actually Minnesota where I'm actually from. Uh, it's called uh, Sleep Number. Uh, they do these nice beds. They have this whole select uh, or this number that they say, hey, you sleep at this number. Your partner maybe sleeps at a different number. You can each rest more comfortably. Um, but this is showing an in-store demo that they have. And it's a great example of data visualization used. Um, it's a way to empower a retail salesperson. Uh, and you can see, of course, like overly happy customers, probably not as happy in real life. Um, but they're looking and it's, it's pretty easy to understand. They see their body. They see the pressure points where it's at. You also see where it's got a uh, single score where it comes down to, it's got both, you know, both on the, one on each side. Uh, so once again, it's, it's a great example, a great tool to say, okay, use data visualization, not just in a mobile app if you're gonna use it in a product, but maybe you're using it to empower sales to better do their job, which is what's happening in this case. Um, so like I say, they, this is a great example for a number of reasons. Um, I'm not sure if they actually do this or not, but of course, another great opportunity would be to say, hey, here's a printout of your uh, your sleep number and like where you know where your pressure was and all that, and here's a coupon or some kind of a thing that I'm gonna give with it uh, to take with you in case they they're not buying right away in the store to remember. So, so that is what I was gonna cover now, and I wanted to leave time for questions because I know we only have 30 minutes in total. So. 
before I open it up for questions, Dan, if Dan has any, but uh, here's some uh, ways to get a hold of me. So a uh, number of things on Twitter, on LinkedIn, whatever, like reach out to me, check out the podcast data able. i uh, love to get your feedback. We're about maybe 14 or 15 episodes in, we'll probably taped another 10 or so. Uh, so we're still relatively new to this podcast game ourselves. So love to get input and in how we can make that better because the product manager audience is certainly one of those audiences that we think is beneficial for this. So that's all I have right now, Dan, if there's any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation. So I'm only seeing one question here now. Let's see if uh, people post them now while I ask you this next one. So one question we always ask all of our speakers is, do you have any advice for aspiring product managers, a piece of wisdom, a quote, or anything you feel like would help them excel? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. So I think there's, there's a lot of words of advice, but I think the, the biggest word of advice is to say yes to things uh, when you're young in your career, but quickly learn how to say no. Um, you're gonna have to like say yes, because you're gonna wanna learn, you wanna take in a lot, but then being able to say no and really focus on the things that are gonna make impact on your product are really important for product managers as they're evolving from that early stage product manager to a more uh, tenured product manager and, and successful. Awesome, thank you for that advice. So we have one question here, which um, which are the best tools for someone starting with data viz? So I think you mentioned a couple books and podcasts and other yeah. things, but do you have a favorite or a best one for someone starting off? Yeah, so there's a, a few that I'm going to list because I don't like to I don't like to pick favorites, but I think there's several that are out there that are really good. Uh, so certainly Tableau has a public version, which I think is a really good way to get involved with data visualization. It's a very strong community that's out there online too. So especially even if you're in an area that doesn't have a very engaged data viz community, uh, you can still get involved with the online community there. Uh, there's also Power BI, which is from Microsoft, is really been upping their game a lot. And their free version is probably the best free version of any of the uh, platform products that are out there. Um, so it's a great thing. You can just download, you can, a lot of horsepower. It's really good for not just visualizing data, but also editing data. So one of the things that, you know, when you get data, a big part of it is preparing data to be in a form that it's ready to visualize. It has a lot of good horsepower, Power BI does to do that. Um, Tableau has a version of that, like they call Tableau Prep, but it's a, it's a fairly pricey uh, uh, product to get. So, um, but then there's, there's other products out there like Click and Domo and others that are out there that are great products. But like I, I tell most people is like, find out what products if your organization has one, because that's one you really should try to understand. Uh, from a product perspective, but if you don't have any in your organization, you're looking to just try to bring something on. Um, to be honest, right now I'm, I'm telling people to say, hey, Power BI is something you can bring in there. It's, it's free to try out. You can do some stuff and maybe you want to switch to Tableau or switch to one of these other things if you go broader because you could really do a lot of these things in the, uh, with whichever product that's out there. Um, but you know, Power BI is just a good one because of the, its free nature and the horsepower that it offers for you to start out with. Awesome, thank you for that. So I think that's it. We don't have any other questions here in the comments. So um, before we wrap it up, I wanted to give all of our listeners some more information about our upcoming courses and events. Um, product School offers product management, coding, data analytics, and digital marketing courses at our 15 campuses around the US, UK, and Canada. Um, if you're located near campus, make sure you stop by one of our weekly events every Wednesday and Thursday. Also, you can find us on social media at Product School and be sure to keep up with the latest product management content at the product blog at productschool.com. You can also find a recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel, Product School San Francisco. And that's it. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much, Dave, for your presentation. Thank you. I look forward to anyone reaching out. Have a great day.